What makes you say you lost your empire because of Puffy? Why you say that? Well, the story that has circulated was that after Tupac got killed, Puffy allegedly gave. We're unearthing a story that is bound to send shockwaves through the music world. Remember the ever enthralling Diddy Tupac drama? Think it was over. Think again. In an eye-popping twist, the roots of the tale appear to run deeper than just the intense rivalry between Diddy's Bad Boy Records and Tupac's Death Row Records. Hold on to your hats, because this revelation might just alter the narrative we've known for decades. Now, it was this documentary that claimed, which we know wasn't true. Yeah, yeah, check this out. We don't, we don't talk about things that are nonsense. In an unforeseen turn of events, Keef D, believed to be involved in the legendary Tupac Shakur's assassination, dropped a bombshell. With Diddy's reputation on the line, it's revealed that Shakur knew a secret about Diddy that could have rocked the music mogul's world. Was Diddy gay? Shakur believed so and threatened to lay it all bare, potentially rattling the foundations of Diddy's empire, especially in the A90s, an era when the music world battled its biases. If I watched the door and him and a man ran out naked, and I said that, I ain't nobody told me that. I saw that myself. Phobic, but I'm not homophobic, and I really don't, you know, care, you know what I'm saying? I just, but um, I'm bad at the game, and it's probably hilarious. Amidst the swirling maelstrom of whispers and rumors, Keith D made the jaw-dropping allegation. Diddy, to shield his image, dangled a tantalizing $1 million muffler to silence Shakur once and for all. That Puffy put out this claim of, you know, I'll pay a million dollars if you get, get rid of right. Tupac and Suge. Tupac is now gone. Remember the fiery showdown between Diddy's Bad Boy Records and Shocker's Death Row Records? It seems the stage wasn't just set for a rap feud, but a revelation that could have set the music world on fire. And Shakur, with a diss track up his sleeve, was ready to ignite the spark. Now, in 2023, as the music industry still navigates its own shadows and prejudices, were transported back to the 90s. The stakes then, sky high. Was Diddy's bid to guard his secret so fierce that it culminated in such a drastic action? As we journey further into the enigmatic world of Diddy, we are compelled to ask, what lengths would one traverse to protect personal truths? The trail of events suggests Diddy's long-standing dedication to silence whispers about his sexuality. Wendy Williams, the 80s radio diva, appears to have faced the wrath of such attempts by Diddy. Because she wanted to put up a picture of him getting his pants pulled down. Wendy, in her burgeoning career in 1998, ventured to insinuate Diddy's possible same-sex preferences. The mogul, in what can only be described as a sharp retaliation, allegedly used his clout to ensure Wendy's abrupt exit from her radio position. But it didn't end there. Diving into the archives, Wendy recounted a chilling episode. Her name was Wendy Williams, and uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. Scuttlebutt in the industry circles pins this girl group as a total, associated with Diddy's bad boy records. An emotionally scarred Williams admitted holding onto the grudges against Diddy for the hell he put me through. Yet time seems to have healed these wounds, or at least paved the path to reconciliation. By 2017, the pair made a public effort to mend bridges in a memorable appearance on The Wendy Williams Show. A visibly emotional Wendy, reflecting on their tumultuous past, confessed to Diddy. I know I've pissed a lot of people off, including you. But Wendy wasn't the sole beacon of these speculations. Whispers from Diddy's ex-bodyguard Gene echoed tales of Diddy's intimate moments with men. Gene candidly relayed, Yo, Gene, watch the door. Don't let nobody come through here. And then divulged, I will watch the door and him and a man ran out naked and I said that. I ain't nobody told me that. I saw that myself. Adding fuel to the fire. Rapper Exhibit shed light on a perplexing encounter with Diddy, where they seemingly ended up in a gay bar. He shared, We go down and get a drink, and then he says, She pointed over the corner. It's two dudes kissing, you know what I'm saying? Navigating this cascade of revelations, we are confronted with the profound intricacies of Diddy's life, compelling us to ponder. What more is veiled in the shadows? He was with every chick, every dude, whoever he wanted to be with. You know, when Kim was alive. And there's another person who never shied away from pointing fingers and raising eyebrows. Curtis 50 Cent Jackson. Now, with a magnifying glass over Diddy's life and actions, it is evident that 50 Cent has been a prominent, almost relentless voice trying to unmask the mogul. Remember the headlines that swarmed the internet when 50 Cent dropped that scalding egg post with the lines? Sorry, I can no longer help you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. 
you are all now left under the leadership of Puff Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. Those were heavy words, suggesting an underlying narrative that 50 Cent seemed adamant to share. But this wasn't a one-off occurrence. There was that memorable moment when the G-Unit leaders stopped by the breakfast club. Things took a turn when Charlemagne Nagad decided to prod about the ongoing Diddy meme fest. 50 Cent, without missing a beat, voiced his thoughts on Diddy's somewhat perplexing mannerisms. Reminiscing about a peculiar incident at Chris Lighty's wedding, he recounted, This is Paul. Okay. You're telling me we got to kick it and He's like, yo, why don't we like go shopping or something? I mean, like, I paid for it. And I was like, this just said. <laughs> While 50 Cent clarified that he wasn't labeling Diddy, he certainly highlighted moments that he found to be fruity. And if you've been monitoring his online actions, you'd remember that controversial Instagram post from an Independence Day party, an image from the event, which saw the likes of Jay-Z, Beyonce, and Usher in attendance, portrayed two men embracing Lil Baby. 50 Cent's comment on the photo, See, this is why I don't go to no party puffy in them at. That is going on here? It didn't stop there. In an undated concert video, 50 Cent made it clear about his feelings towards Diddy's parties, suggesting an undertone of discomfort with Diddy's demeanor. Continuing to unravel this multifaceted saga, we observe Diddy's reputation at its epicenter. His public image wasn't just about mere perception. It was a bastion strategically crafted to shield his vulnerabilities from the world's scrutiny. Let's take a moment to understand the dynamics that fueled the feud between Diddy and Shaker. While the notorious East Coast-West Coast battle offers context, other hidden elements seem to have fanned the flames of their rivalry. On the record, Orlando Baby Lane Anderson's retaliation for an altercation was seen as the spark for Shaker's downfall. But scratching beneath this narrative, darker intentions appear evident, acting perhaps out of allegiance to Diddy or other concealed motives. Baby Lane audaciously snatched a Death Row Records chain from Shocker's ally, Trevon Lane. Whispers in the corridors of the music world hinted at Diddy's brazen plan to display this chain in a music video, a direct challenge to Shakur and the entire Death Row Brigade. This audacity took a grim turn when Trevon cornered Baby Lane at the MGM Grand. It's crucial to highlight that Baby Lane shared blood ties with Keith D., the individual presently detained in connection with Tupac's tragic end. While many hastily connected Shocker's fatal encounter to the MGM face-off, this story seems to have more layers yet to be unearthed. Troublingly, the word on the street alludes to a million-dollar price Diddy might have set on Shocker's head. Even in 1995, that sum was nothing short of monumental. Keith D's recent disclosures paint a much murkier and personal portrait of the situation. The narrative stretches beyond mere territorial rivalries or financial gains. Shakur's potential revelation of Diddy's most guarded secret appears to have pushed the boundaries of the latter's actions. So, Wendy Williams and 50 Cent's ordeals attest to the lengths Diddy might go to preserve his cultivated facade. Wendy's career setbacks post her remarks about Diddy's personal life highlight his readiness to deploy his significant influence against any threat, whether perceived or concrete. Taking into account the volatile milieu of the AN90s alongside Diddy's past deeds, a cloud of doubt undeniably looms over his involvement in one of the grimmest epics of music history. Keefe's recent statements undoubtedly cast Diddy's intentions in a different light. Though many attribute the conflict to the East Coast-West Coast musical standoff, certain anomalies leave us perplexed. In light of the revelations, Reactions have surged from every corner, with fans and industry insiders alike picking apart every fragment of this ever-evolving narrative. Among the sea of opinions, we dove deep into what loyal followers of the rap genre had to say. A vocal portion of fans brought up Diddy's recent Breakfast Club interview. One fan ardently expressed, I think he's telling the truth. Diddy looked guilty in his I Breakfast Club interview. This sentiment seemed to gain traction, with numerous fans echoing the same sentiment about Diddy's demeanor during the chat. Could his actions during the interview truly be a hint of underlying guilt? Or were fans projecting their own suspicions onto a man merely caught in a tumultuous moment? Another commentator postulated a different theory musing Diddy is a gatekeeper who is willing to do whatever the higher-ups want. That's why he isn't held accountable for anything. The suggestion here is of a larger conspiracy, insinuating that Diddy, despite his immense stature, might just be a cog in a bigger machine. These individual opinions capture a slice of the broader sentiment. The general consensus? There's an unmistakable divide. Some firmly believe in Diddy's direct involvement, while others speculate a broader network of influencers pulling the strings. This tangled tale raises pressing questions. Is Diddy truly the puppet master behind these events? 
or is he just a pawn in the larger music industry game? Moreover, reflecting on the 90s biases, has the music scene genuinely progressed in accepting diverse sexual identities? We want to hear your thoughts. Comment below with your take on this intricate saga. Until next time, remember, the world of celebrity gossip is full of unexpected twists. Stay tuned and stay curious.